everybody has heard this story from Luke chapter 15, the prodigal son. Today we're going to look at it from a different point of view because this story is actually about us. It's not just about the prodigal son. It's about the father and the brother and the servant and is the mom even involved? Today, this message is one that I think a lot of families need to hear because if there's one thing we can all relate to, it's that our families are broken from time to time. Relatives who once got along and share the same great memories don't talk for years at a time. Let's see what this particular passage of scripture can teach us. And the way we get it now is that the prodigal son, no matter what mistakes you make, you can return to God the Father. It's about repentance in our narrative. But let's look deeper because we all recognize this story. We all have relatives who have fallen into conflict with us over their political opinions or sometimes have even stolen from us or abusing drugs and alcohol, have shamed the family in some way. And in this case, the father was ready at all times, full of grace and peace to receive his son as soon as he saw him come home. He wasn't beset with resentment and anger and frustration. And my son is going to have to apologize to me and make amends before I'll dare embrace him. Well, let's break it down and look more and see if we can relate to this because I know there's parents out there that need to hear this. And I know there are children estranged from parents that need to hear this. If you look below in the spring store, you'll see a new line of merch. Ambrose of Milan, speak truth to power. Dads of the church. If you're raising your kids in the faith, this might be the hoodie for you. So when the story starts, the family has complete trust. The younger of the sons went to the father and said, Father, give the portion of the inheritance that falls to me. Okay. So he divides it up among his sons. And almost immediately, the son leaves the father. He packs his stuff up and goes with his inheritance. And you might say, oh, how ungrateful. He left his father and went. But that's not the indication we get from this character. As we'll see, the son is not purposely trying to do foolish things according to Proverbs. It says that a lot of other circumstances happen. First, how do we know he wasn't saying, I'm going to go take my father's inheritance? inheritance and I'm going to make him proud with it. Isn't that the human story? The best of intentions? So he goes out and he does waste his money on frivolous living. It says it flat out. And the smart kid, he's learned from his father. He knows, look, I can earn money anytime. It's going to be okay. But then what happened? There arose a severe famine in the land. Oh, now we're going against biblical wisdom because we didn't take a portion of that inheritance and set it aside for the lean times. This lesson goes back to ancient Egypt and Joseph. Now, Joseph taught Pharaoh how to set aside things for times of famine. So during the famine, he began to be in want. He didn't whine and cry and run home to daddy. He tried to fix it on his own. It says next that he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. So two things here. This young man set himself to a citizen of that country. Why does it say it like that? Well, these are God's covenant people. And he is so ashamed. He's wasted this inheritance of his father's. His desire was good. I'm going to make it right. But he wasted it with riotous living. Sin got into him and he didn't succeed. And now he has lowered himself to go do menial labor to feed the pigs of a citizen of another country. He has put himself in the position of being reliant on somebody else after he had had this wonderful inheritance. And it says he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating. This shows great character. This young man is trying. He's trying to recover. He's eating pig slop. He's serving someone from another country where he doesn't even live. He's as an immigrant and he's working so hard. But one day he came to himself and he said, how many of my father's hired servants not only would have bread, but have enough to spare. This is unbearable. I can't do this anymore. So he says, I'll arise and go to my father's house and I'll tell him, father, I have sinned against you. I am so sorry. Just please make me one of your hired servants. He doesn't say I'm going to go home and make excuses about how things went bad and ask for my father to clothe me with the finest things and restore me to the honor that I once held in the eyes of my father. He's willing to go back home and say, father, just make me one of your servants. I blew it. 
I was no good. I didn't do what I was supposed to do, and I will pay the consequence. He's going to tell his father that he finds himself no longer worthy to even be his son. This guy is bothered by this stuff. Now in our world, the sins of our children, do we see them operating with assets and defects of character? Of course we do. It can't just be about that angry moment, the day that your daughter walked out the door with that offensive statement, or the day that your son didn't pay you back when he was in dire straits and needed it, and you've held on to this debt for 10 years and you're not going to welcome your son back into the fold until he pays that money back in full because it's about responsibility and he should have learned responsibility when he was younger. And it's about the anger you hold and this resentment is living rent free in your brain for your progeny, your own flesh and blood. So the son arose and went to his father. He humbled himself and he went home. And while he was still afar off, the father sees him, my son, and he runs to him and he throws himself around his son and he starts kissing his neck. Imagine the shame the son feels now. He didn't walk up to the son and go, what are you doing back here? You had been given your inheritance already. I've got nothing else for you. The thought never even entered his mind. The father was in a position where he was ready to receive the son at all times with forgiveness and mercy and peace and all the tenets of the Christian faith that we're told were to be practicing. The father in this story gives us this example. The son gives us the story of the best intentions and how they go awry, the story of humanity. And as they're embracing, the son says, Father, I've sinned against you. I am not even worthy to be called your son. Just please don't shame me any further. Just make me like one of your servants. But the father says, bring out the best robe. Put his ring back on, put the sandals on his feet, for my son is home. And bring the fatted calf. Yes, that one. Oh yes, I'm sure. And tonight we will eat and we will be merry. For this was my son and he was dead and now he's alive. He was lost, but now he's found. And they began to be merry. Now, the older son was in the field. And as he came and drew near to the house after a, a day of hard work, tools, dirty, sweat, honoring his parents every day as a duty to the living God, he hears music and he slows down and he waves over one of the servants and says, what does this mean? What's going on? And the servant says, your brother has come home and your father has received him because he's safe and sound. Even the servant seems to get it. He indicates like, hey, it's cool. Your brother's home and he's safe and sound. That's why we're celebrating. Of course, why wouldn't we be? But the brother, the elder, was angry and would not go in. Therefore, his father came out and pleaded with him. So the son answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years I have been serving you. I haven't broken one of your commandments. I've never transgressed you. You've never given me a goat. But as soon as your other son comes home, after wasting his inheritance with riotous living and harlots, you embrace him. And the father looked at this son and said, Son, all that I have is yours. You've always been there with me. But it is right that we should be merry and make glad because your brother is home. He was lost, but now is Found. What a wonderful passage in this story, because it's not just about the prodigal son like we hear in most sermons. There's a family involved here. There's the father. There's the responsible child. There's the irresponsible child. Air quotes, irresponsible. It looks to me like he tried to get himself out of the situation. We have servants involved. I spent a lot of time thinking about mom, because we don't hear a word about what mom was doing, where she was. I want so badly to speculate, and, and it's the scripture, so I can't put something in it that's not there, but I want to imagine that the mother's just been in prayer the whole time that her family has returned to her whole. And I asked my wife for some advice, and, and she said, well, maybe the mom has passed away. Also a possibility, and that's why you can't speculate in scripture. We could make up this story about a mother's love, and she was in prayer the whole time, and now her prayers have been answered, but we just don't know. But we do know how moms react. We do know moms want their families together. So now let's relate this story to two things. First, our own families, 
parents, moms, dads, estranged from your children for their actions, for their behaviors. Two things. One, what about the mistakes you made when you were young? I know I wouldn't want them held up against me, the ones I made when I was young. Number two, what condition are you in to receive a loved one that is estranged? Are you in prayer? Are you in the scripture? Are you living the virtues of a Christian life? We're far enough into the Gospel of Luke that we have them. We know what they are. It was just a few chapters ago, Luke 11, where we learned how to pray. Jesus taught us how to pray, so we know how to pray. And what about the eldest son? The father did not say, eldest son, your feelings about this situation are unjust. The eldest son's feelings about this situation are very just. But the point is the father recognizes we're all the same. We all fall short of the glory of God. We all need mercy. We all need forgiveness before a just God. Now, the second part of this. This story is a parable. It's teaching us about the kingdom of God, what it's like when the Father God receives one of his lost sheep. There are some that are there already, like the responsible son doing the will of the Father, and the Father has already rewarded. There are servants there. The Father handles this with perfect wisdom and justice. The son who went out, tried with the best of intentions to do it his way and failed, had to come back, and he was treated with mercy and kindness by the Father. So we get another picture from Jesus of the very kingdom of heaven here. So from now on, when you think about the story of the prodigal son, remember there's a whole family there. Remember that first, it's a parable about the kingdom of God. It has to do with the divine truth claims of Jesus Christ regarding his relationship with the Father and what happens in heaven. But the second part of this is our own families, our own broken families. What do we do about it? How do we fix it? The story of the parable of the lost son is a gold mine, and it will teach us so much about who we are and how we can do better. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. You can support our work, which is a dual in-person and online ministry. You can visit my website, evangelistnickgarrett.com, read the latest blog. Get a book I've written, Amazon.com slash author slash Nicholas Garrett. You can support us a little bit, PayPal, Cash App, Venmo. I do need some help. I have not solicited this month and expenses are coming. So if you could give just a little bit, please do as you are able and as prayer permits. Check out the new stuff at the Spring Store and I look forward to talking to you next time.